Alphabet Intelligence Podcast. Afrobeat Intelligence. Democratizing African music. This is your office. Yes, it's my office. <laughs> it's so brown and white. <laughs> Why? It's like only two colors in here. Yeah, it's it's it makes me it makes me more comfortable. It's not too chaotic. Mm. You know, when you have too many colors around, it, it keeps the mind busy. Okay. If you give me a chance, I'll make it. I'll, I'll make everything white. <laughs> and you know, brown and white they mix. Brown and white they go to they mix together. Yeah. And they're both dark and gentle. Yeah, I'm a gentle man. I'm very dark. I don't think <laughs> gentle. <laughs> You've not been gentle. You've been everything but gentle. Um, uh, Dr. Seth is also here. Yes, yes. yes. Dr. Seth. Dr. Seth is brown too. <laughs> <laughs> it fits. It fits with the office. Yes. <laughs> so. It's interesting. Um, this is where most most of your strategic decisions are taken. Yes, most of it. Like this is where we create, and yeah, most times we even produce here. Yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. Doctor says we take this yeah. seat right here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> he, that's your seat. Yeah, he yeah. takes it. I'll sit down there. As it's more student. comfortable for him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's where the concept dropped at that time. Nice. So, you know how. How often have you people had to do these things? Like, how often do you have to do? Did you have to do these things to be able to work together? Like, sit together, have conversations, vibe. How often did you people have to do? And how long did it before it turned into anything? I think it was, Doctor. It was as you came to the office, Nabi. Yeah. After we communicated for a while, a while, a while yeah. via Instagram. Then we now move to WhatsApp. WhatsApp yeah. We were on Instagram for a minute before yeah. you needed to send me Stop. files. So you guys had a talking stage. Yeah, we had a talking yeah. stage. <laughs> 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 I was <posting> here. <laughs> okay. So and it evolved to a point where I now uh, said, "Okay, come to the office. Let's meet." Now, what I was ready to meet him. This was where you guys first met. That was the first time we met. So when we met in this office no there's another office down the road okay so that's the editing side of uh, work okay so um so he came to the office we sat down we spoke for a while i don't know if you noticed but i was feeding off his energy okay i was trying to i wanted to see if i can be in the same room with him because at that point i'd made my mind up to work with him yeah. Until, but until I meet him, I don't know if he's the kind of person I can work with. True. So that was the first phase. Then, what next? Now we didn't. See, did we see again until we started yeah. working? Yeah. The next, I think the next meet was very creating the album. Yeah. Did, we we met only album. once. The second time. So you guys just met yourself once. Yeah. Yes. By the second time. Where it was yeah. a that check was the first thing. That's the thing do. <laughs> Where, where, where did you do? There, it was at uh, the, day, the yeah. hotel. Yeah, we checked into a hotel. Myself, him, yeah. Paladin. Paladin. That was the first time I met Paladin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and who else? One was, of my guys, Jay. Jay came yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jay. Yeah. Jay was there. How many people were in the room? About like four. four. Right. Yeah. About four. four. And instantly. Yeah. So what happened was. Um, if I, if I, if I uh, doctor, please step in whenever yeah. I can remember anything. So, I think, so what we, after that first meet, we now started communicating more often. Yeah. Then I was like, I told her, look, I want to make this album. This, did I send, I sent you references. I sent you some songs. Mm. Right? No, no, I don't know. You just, no, because by that Didn't time. Didn't I send you like a rental brothers or something? No, no, no. We just played them, that in your office. Oh, so yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We play, I play, yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah, we played. I know I don't yeah. <laughs> So we actually, uh, I played all those songs for him and I played the kind of hip hop music I listened yeah, to. Yeah. And all that. So that's where we vibe. So at this point, I he knew what I was trying to create. Yeah. Okay. And we checked into the hotel. We're just sitting down and talking. We're just talking, having conversations, and the next thing, we say more start. Mm. <laughs> so I told him, so what happened was, 
we're just talking about random stuff. Yeah. We, we didn't it's go it's straight it's into it's music. It's yeah. Just life. We just yeah. talked, yeah. talk, 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 laughed, yeah. everything. We, we had dreams. Just vibing. Yeah, we just yeah. vibing. And the next thing, I was getting to know the other guys too. Yeah. You know, so we're gisting and everything. And that was when we now started discussing the project. Yeah. yeah. How I wanted it. Because I had to sell the idea to him. I had to sell it to him. He had to con- conceive it. What, what, what was this idea that you were selling? What was the initial idea you were selling? So, I'm I'm Igbo, yeah, and I love high life music. I love the Igbos. I love how we sound. You know, I love all kinds of music, yeah. But I, I there was something about the Igbo music that that is so melodious, right? Yeah, and I I felt or I, I that I could transform it into something even better. Like blending it with hip hop or Afro beat, yeah, you know. So that was the idea I had. I've, I've been like every time I'm using my, I'm doing like you no know, beatboxing, yeah, and bringing that Oriental Brothers vibe and giving it the hip hop beat. I've been doing this thing a long time ago, like since 1995. Yeah, yeah, and all I needed was just the producer. I never got the guy, and I worked with a lot of producers. Until I now met this winch. <laughs> so he, he, he sold it to you. Yeah. When he was talking, what were you thinking? So funny enough, this is the thing. So at that time, because I'm a, I'm a project person. Yeah. If you want to go back to my works, most times you say I've done like different projects only me. So I think at that point I was so frustrated. So I was like, I want to do something that nobody had actually done well before. So nobody, nobody was doing anything like that. I started discovering high life music. I was like, let me go deep into this. Let me see how much I could do stuff. Yeah. So that was the same time he was like, okay, he wanted to create the, um, the Papa Benji series. So I was like, perfect. So now it was not just me creating it alone. So I was like, okay, this is somebody that actually shares in the same thing, which is merging um, high life and hip hop. So that was the right time for me to actually explore my head. But now I was scared because. Uh, it's not like I'd done it so well. I yeah. didn't get t- before that time. So that time was actually the same time I actually wanted to step on on a project. Okay. So it was, we are, I basically, I, I feel we had the same energy because me, I was going to do that and he want, actually wanted to do the same thing. So, so was, there, when you, was there a sense of occasion though in that meeting that knowing that did you guys, did you guys ever feel it in any way that this was going to be more than one project? I yeah, think you did because I kept yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah we I did. kept yeah, selling yeah, because the, you kept big selling the big dream to him yeah, or like bigger, yeah. we can do this and yeah, this can happen. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm, I'm a marketer, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. 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 so the thing is, one thing that he said that caught my attention when we we're talking, he said when he mentioned the fact that his dad, they, they have, his father has a, they have a band, band yeah. till now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you know, and he was talking about how deep rooted he was into high life music yeah so it made me even more comfortable so our conversation was just clicking that was mm. the reason why when we now met that day we just it was easy and how long did it, did it take before we made the first beat mm. it didn't take, take like I, th- I think after that day then four days we met four days after that four days after we now started yeah, working, yeah. working yeah the beat for Udo yeah the first beat we made was Udo so the reason why Udo, that's this record. Ah, uh, uh, that one. Well, let me chop this yeah, one. This, one. Chop my, chop life. Yeah. Yeah. this is heavy though. Basket, basket, basket. Ah, this song is mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, just just go ginger me now. So, ah, this song I love this song so much. Ah, doctor, eh? Oh. A doctor killed me that day. So um, I, I, I told him this is the idea. But at that point, yeah, he, he had a little bit of doubt, yeah, like yeah. he said earlier on, yeah. that it was going to work. But I, was, I think it was the, the, the confidence. I like, hey. trust me. Yeah. If this thing fail, my yeah. name will be bright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when he then started, yeah. I was watching him because I won't lie to you. You know that kind of thing? 
Uh, like when like all these scientists they are look, looking at the, a, a, a rocket take off to space, right? Yeah. Yes. And everybody they fear. Yes, yes. You understand? Yeah. Until you see, they don't Strong. reach orbit or whatever, yeah. bro. That was how it was. Yeah. So he started, bro. If you know the amount of element, the elements that made this beat become what you're hearing, yeah, you won't believe it. What this guy hid behind the beats and everything. So as he was making it. He started differently. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like this. I started. I started. I did. What I did was I started. Yeah, I started high life first. Yes. I played a sweet high life. I laid a proper high life tune. You know, yeah. And I sampled the high life. Kept it one side. Created hip hop side. No, no, don't put give them too much. <laughs> <laughs> As I created the hip hop side, so the the high life. So okay, so this will happen. That that it was, it was just like when it when it match. So when I created, I created the high because normally the way you normally sample, you create the hip hop first, then you sample the high life. Yeah. But no, I created the whole high life. I sampled the high life, then I started creating the hip hop. So what I did after I created the hip hop, then I just carried one element. I just put one hmm. side. Everybody just stood up. I like, shamed. <laughs> like, ah. shit. Like, even me, I'm not lying to you. I'm not like, honestly, I did, he I did, did not he, know. He did not know. I did not know it was going to I saw his shock. He was like, the, t- the did whole you, room yeah. was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I did was, when you um, yeah. so what, what I did, ah, shit. Like, I was mm-hmm. remembering, so I created, yeah. <laughs> When I did that show, but the whole room was done. Boom. So we know that okay now. Then there were too many layers already. We we're like, ah, at least we had something there. So we we're just building, 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 connecting, building, connecting. Then we had like something we could play and actually enjoy the music first bro, in the studio. Bro, that room. Yeah, no, the room was. There was something in that room. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I felt yeah. it. He felt it. Yeah. He didn't tell me mm. that he felt it. Mm. Until after the project, yeah. so me, I was not telling that, but you know, see, there was something that I, I, I was telling that man, I was feeling something all through. From that day, we started working till after the project. Mm. There was something I was feeling. So he now confirmed that he too he felt the same mm. thing because we we didn't get tired. No, at all. We did not get. We didn't fall off. Let's say we didn't go mm. to the point like, mm, I'm tired. Mm. We decide to go and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like you know. What? Mogus. Mogu sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody was tired. Like I'll mm. leave him at two AM and I'm back at seven, 7 AM. I swear. Dude. But back. For a month. How were you able to do this? I know you you're a busy man. You have your calendar packed across the friend fields. How were you able to carve the time for this? Mm. The thing is I was committed to that project. It was, I, okay, so the way the idea of Papa Benji came yeah. down to how I met Dr. Seth, yeah. down to how available I now became that period, because I had like a week yeah, that I took first from um, my flatmates, yeah. right? And the moment we started working, I I knew that I needed to be committed to this one. So what I did was that I moved certain things around and just said, you know, well, let me just complete it. Because I already had a little timeline. Mm-hmm. That we, I, we, I told him already that we have yeah. one month before I have to go live with Papa Benji. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I just, what I did was I... I didn't have the, the pandemic was there as well, so yeah. there, there were no gigs, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> so rent was due. It was like you know, I looked at the time, like bright, you're not traveling, yeah. nothing they happen. Why not create? The only thing that was happening was just flatmates. So as I opened it, and I saw that it was working, and I felt it. I just said, you know, what, bright, just lock the whole one month, and that's it. So but the, right now, so the, the entire way, project was made in a month. Yeah. yeah. One month. Exactly one month. That must have been exciting, though. I swear. Yeah. I wish I recorded that process. But we just took pictures. We should have recorded that process. But we didn't know. 
Like, yeah, you know, you know, it be, like, we knew you guys were creating something special, but you weren't certain of the impact. Yeah, we weren't yeah. certain, but we knew something was being created, but we didn't know that, oh, this is how the result, like, the reason why I know that what we created, the Abbas, is beyond us, yeah, is because yesterday I listened to a couple of tracks on the album and I ended with Udo. And there's this thing that Yabaz gives me. Yeah. And other people confirmed it as well. It's nostalgic. It takes you to like 1980, 1970. It makes you feel good. Yeah, you really go Dr. You really go back. Yeah. It actually makes you feel good. From the first track to the last track. And I'm like, man, when I create something here, oh. yeah. then I think back to how we were feeling when we were creating it. And I'm like, okay, this is magical, man. Yeah. Yeah. So for something like that, you will create time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this year's own, the way I managed it, I won't lie to you, I still don't know. But you had the London show. You yeah, were working so, yeah. on, you had the London show, you're working on multiple projects. Yeah. I, I mean, I was sorry, I was referring to your bars, but yeah. now this London one, eh? Horoscopes. Ah, yeah, horoscopes. So what, what, what helped us was we started working on horoscopes. Yeah. A week after. Um, Yabaz dropped. So I went to him and I was like, dude, man, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> See, I get, we can't stop right now. Are you are you tired? I asked him and he said, no. Abi, yeah, yeah, are you tired? Yeah, he said, yeah, no. no. So let's keep walking. And he said, yeah, because he feels like he needs to start creating. I said, okay, great. Since you're feeling this way, the movie Scorpio is around the corner. Why not we create the soundtrack to that one? Yeah. And I told him the story. Yeah, yeah. And as I sold him the story, he picked it immediately and made the first beat that didn't even make the album. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so set. Yeah. For this one, we've known for people like me that consume a lot of music, that yeah. study the industry and you know, follow the art. We know, we've, we know of you. We know what you have done and what you can do. But there's a certain feeling that this project was, I don't want to use the word reintroducing you, but it was, it, it pushed you to another level. Yeah. yeah. What does that look like for you? So, um, so for me, because, okay, there's something my brother said, my younger brother said, I, I was just lucky, he described me like that. He said something, he was like, yeah, he knew this project actually took me to a certain level. But what he said was I created something for myself. Yeah. Like, like I didn't just, I didn't just make it because I, w I wanted to create something that for me to, I'll be able to enjoy. Yeah. So while doing that, I now placed, and also I was now, I was, I was in a spot that it was, that even if I live there and people actually come in there, you can see imprints of what we did there. So no matter what, no matter how people want to copy the style, no matter how sound wants to evolve, that sound is actually there. It's not going anywhere. It's there. Like, the sound is there. So it's not something we could repl replicate. Initially, I wanted to do like 10 tracks, but we had to cut it down to nine. And why? Because when we listened to the nine tracks, it was just done. Yeah. So I, I feel the project took over us and it selected itself. Like... Even up to, up until the time I finished it. Because like, we have we created about thirteen songs. Thirteen songs, yeah. Already everything yeah, done, done. done. Everything done. Because we we're making and yeah. we just kept making. We got the ten. Yeah. But we had more. We had more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, you're saying? Yeah, so so I've, so for me I feel I feel it is it's a spot that no matter even no matter how far I go, I'll still appreciate. Yeah. Even if I do stuff that is better than I would still appreciate, and I think for me, it just kept. Because for me, I've, I've, I look at my work or my career as like graduation, just like I said, from yeah. just one to just two to just. So there's some stages in your GS is that you know, say this time I've been killed. Maybe when I was in my SS one, I scatter. Yeah. So that time, you know, go feel forget them because you know, say you get one time with you. So yeah. so that was it for me. So horoscope was a point where I know, say I drop. So. Anytime, any day, and if I listen to it, I will feel myself. I want to say, no, this is a masterpiece. Somebody can actually sample. Can even me? I can sample it. Okay, so, it's, 
it's just tough. I appreciate. It. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So as I was saying, let me wrap up. So what happened was because we worked on the album for the whole year. Yeah. And we spread it. Sometimes we take breaks. Yeah. We work, work. Sometimes he will go back to the mainland to yeah. relax more. Yeah. So that's when we don't have any artist available to us. We just we just chill. Yeah. So it wasn't like Yabas that it was we like yeah. that's <laughs> so much in no my brother no my your brother. was it was walking on we are going down <laughs> and guess what <laughs> everybody we chased came through straight up like as i call you the next day the person is there yeah. everyone was just coming back to back so it was like we just kept walking and walking yeah. until it was ready with this one we took breaks so when my show came up papa benji all these other gigs i could walk around it so as far the album had, had been ready since so the yeah, horoscope. The horoscope was ready, ready since. since yeah. It was ready like in September, I mean. Yeah. About, was it about September? Yeah, yeah. Uh, September, September. Yeah. It, was it was ready. So what we now did, because of we had time, like, okay, since we get time, we now started flexing Mozu. He now started doing any hour. Like, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, you know, at the end of the day, I can now say it took us like a year. Yeah, yeah. But we were done with it we're since done. September. Oh. Then... He did. He did. He still worked on it two days before we submitted Sometimes, it, yeah. and no, three days before three we submitted days, yeah. it. And when he, he sent it to me, I told him a few of the things he added. I said, "You add this thing, yeah." He, <laughs> he that looked at me, said, ah, no, "You try, yo. <laughs> <laughs> The way he hid the things, yeah, uh, you no. will never know. Yeah. And it worked perfectly. Yeah. For you, you know your story. We know your story of how you used to how you used to be an artist and how this is a bit of a 360 uh, 360 or 180 180 <laughs> you, you, you 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 faced it so why why yes <laughs> music yes you had it good you you, you you have it good in tv you have it good in comedy why okay so why 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 you've done it you've done a lot i wanted to use the word you've done it all but you're still doing <laughs> but you've done a lot and conventional thinking would make have us believe that you know tv is another area that you're expanding at the same time rapidly comedy you're still doing that you just pulled off an entire sold out of venue in the uk big deal congratulations thank on you that. very much <laughs> <laughs> thank you and music why did you have to come back why are you back you know the thing is music has been my thing man i love music like i love as you say you love person love i'm in love with music and i couldn't do it then because i didn't have him yeah and I think what happened was I created, the opportunity came, right? I, I, I saw the opportunity and I was like, right, why not just take it? So I was creating a project, I had music to complement the project. And I was like, right, this might be your opportunity to step back into music because I just met this guy. Yeah. And Dr. Seth came through and it just it was just perfect, right? Because um at the time that i decided to say okay, you know what let's use this music Let, let's let's drop the album yeah right? i had been checking out all that you know we had around the kind of music people were listening to and i was like i think they are ready okay because yeah, i was like i, I had some stuff I was like okay all right they took this one i saw some people coming out i was like okay fine so I just decided that I, I think it was just clear that they were ready to get take something in like your pass. You, I know it seemed like a <laughs> risk, but, but but why was it a very very a, a more personal question was why was it this format you chose to return when you left the last time you were a rapper? Oh, why did you come back as this? Okay, it could be a, it could have been anything. You even rapped on on Assembly of Gods. Why was it this that you came to do? So the thing is, I I had to be 
I don't really care about like most people say, ah, why is he not rapping on these songs and all that? Ah, why go get song you don't know, rap on top? When we started making the album, yeah. I, even when the idea came to me, I never imagined myself jumping on any of the track, any of the tracks, right? Yeah. But I was like, in my mind, I was like, but what if the right sound comes? Will you jump on it? I like, yeah, maybe. But this first time, I'd rather produce, executive produce, other than instead of being inside. I want to create it. I want to be part of the creative process. You know, so I don't want to be part of it. And when we made Yabas and we listened to everything, the only song I told him that was calling my name, but I was just I said it playfully, was Udo. Yeah. I was like, man, this is the kind of beat I like to jump on, but I didn't, right? Then when we started creating horoscopes, yeah, I heard Assembly of Gods, and I was like, okay, this one is calling my name. I can hear me on this one, and I told him, and he said, he said no, right? Yeah, I said no at first. Yeah, why? No. Why did you say no at first? So for me, yeah, when when I'm creating. I say no before I say, before I say yes to anything. So once I say no, I believe the next person needs to, if it's actually good, it needs to it needs to pass my no. And I'm like, okay, then I think I need to understand this. So you intentionally place a ro- creative yeah, roadblock. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's no, it's, you can't It's like can't a bit of a over. test. <laughs> yeah, test. At least the first test, because what happens is, I know, I know once I'm creative, I go by what everybody says. I was just lost. I know. I don't. I don't know how I'll be fun. I'll, I'll be like I'm just left alone to drown. So I say no, 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 no. Then yes, no, yes, no. Then yes, yes, yes. Then I'm like okay. All of us are now in sync immediately. So when he said when he said he wanted to do, it, I was like no. What then, informed that immediate decision apart from this? What was the back The song in was the song. Uh, I think the song. The song is like it's like it's, it's like it's like a poem. Yeah. Yeah, but at that time, I had not seen the last bit of it. So if you notice, from Dremel, we had a break. So, yeah. on top, on the fly. so I didn't even know what I was doing at that point. So I felt like, okay, after Dremel, we should just end it. Okay. So he said he wanted to put his verse on. I was like, okay, no. But I was like, he was like, no, 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 he could try to be good. I was like, ah, are you sure? I said no again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, okay, if it doesn't make sense, then we'll take it out. Then that, that, that's what caught me. I was like, okay. So let's go. So yeah, I said that. I said yeah, it, yeah. He it, said if it doesn't make sense, we'll take it out. Like, oh, oh, if that, that one, okay. No. I, 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 there's one thing I know. I trust my ears. I don't. I can't lie. If it's good, it's good. There's nothing you do to me. Mm. This was, this was beautiful. I want to get that verse. I want to. I guess it's time I step in. The origin of a true MC begins. Call me the king or call me the kingpin. Is it guru guru? Can the same thing? And we out. That's me, baby. So when he submitted, <laughs> when he submitted that, like, did he submit more than this? No, this was it. When he submitted it, what made you accept it? So it was his voice. Okay. The voice was that was the closing voice. That's the voice I needed to close everything. Cause even if you notice from from Dremel's voice, it was going up and then back in didn't step in. So the, the the voice just closed it. Bam! I just needed that voice. So the voice was the first thing. Then, cause to, I'm not like to you. I don't I don't really pay so much attention to what people say. So yeah. just the sound and how it sounds for me. So yes. basically, the voice was everything. Then he was bothered about his lyrics. Me, I was like. Yeah, this is good. This is okay. Don't even touch it. Don't. I was like, he was like, yeah, he kept saying. Yeah. I said, Me, I was not the one. I was like, no, no, no. Wanna. Because yeah. what happened was I freestyled on it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was what? like, that was a freestyle. Yeah, yeah. that was a freestyle. Okay. <laughs> so I freestyled on it, and I was like, so do you yeah, like it? Yeah. And he said, yes. Yeah. Okay, so okay. No, what now? Yeah, yeah. Let me go and write, write it. it he said, no. no. <laughs> Don't write it. This is okay. I said no. I can't. He said no. This is like okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. And I came back again. I said, back can, can I, I still no. write this? <laughs> <laughs> I said no. Yeah. Because it just, it just fits. Like it just does it. It was not so, because I told him like the mood in my head was not so serious. It was so serious. And it just ended it like, everything yeah. was just, it was just it. 
I mean, for me, hmm. it's so nice. That's beautiful to to be able to experience that push and pull, push and pull. Yeah. Is that what provides the balance between the both of you? Like, there's always this push and pull, push and pull. Actually, yes. When I was in London, um, uh, we were talking about some projects, and I sent him some stuff, right? Um, you know, let me not mention London. Because you could see how they talk about it. You cut this part off. I'm okay. okay. Um, so, there are times that I send, I was telling that, look, I just heard this stuff. Like, tell me what you think. Because most times I go hunting. Yeah. I've met an artist. I was like, look, I've, I've got this beat for you. This is what the, st- the story is about. You know, if you can help me do it this way or whatever, just do your thing. And when they send it to me, I send it to him. What Dr. Said does was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, he doesn't care who the person is. <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. So, and I said, okay, like, listen to him again. Like, he will now, like, no, he will now say, you see this part and this part is what I need. Then I'll now go back to the person and say, okay, no, what can you build your vibe around this and this? Yeah. So, I'm not too, in, like, I don't force it on him. Like, if I go, like, I like this, it must be like that. No. If he says no, I go, like, okay, where, where can we meet? Like, because I like this vibe. I think this is going to work. Yeah. And so, we, we kind of, we, we understand, we understand yeah. ourselves. So, I think that it, it, it works perfectly because that makes every of our production almost like, like it's near perfect yeah. because sometimes he's done with the job i'll take it home i the stress and where yeah. yeah i'll take it home the next day or even that same day i'm like yeah. guy you see this part mm-hmm. we do some mm-hmm. then this part do I'm, and i feel this one will happen mm-hmm. doctor with yours <laughs> 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 but what, we, what what happens is that when he now goes to look listen to it now that oh yeah i noticed what you talk about mm-hmm. now when he's fixing it mm-hmm. yeah. he will now uh, just to frustrate me, <laughs> he won't show himself. You then add he will not add some things, yeah. and I say, "Ah, this uh, guy, this guy, good, <laughs> nice." So it, it's pretty dope, man. The way it works, it works out. You know, your bassy came out, and the reaction was, when I say near instant, like everyone who listened to that album was arrested. When did when did you know that this was something? When did it get to you that this was the scale of impact that you've had? So, um, like he was saying earlier on, when we made the first beat, Udo, yeah, that was the first time doing that project, project. that I now rel- I got I just I like. <sighs> Okay. Now we have something. <laughs> so, at that point, confidence came in. I trusted him, but then he had not, you know, we've not created anything. And I shouldn't walk in. Yeah. Sure. So, he did that and I was confident. Now, in terms of the, the, the project itself, yeah. the reason why I was confident about it, the reason why I knew it was going to be good was because of the story. Now, in, like, we love stories. People love stories. A good story. So there's a story behind Yabas. Yabas is a love story. I don't have the funds yet. That's why we've not been able to create um, the movie. It's a short movie. It's a music, movie, music, whatever you want what yes. to call it. Uh, it's a film. It's a film, a music film. film. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the word. That's the word. So it's a film. Very, like... I can't wait to produce it, right? Yeah. And um, when it's done, that's when you get to understand what uh, we created. That's when you get to feel it even more. Every song tells a part of the element that makes the film, right? So, and we infuse it into the film, the, the music and all that. And that's the reason why I'm slowing down on, you know, with the video well because i'm trying to see if i can if we can release the videos when we are cre- when we release the film you know but when i got the story and the story you know, beautiful story i knew that i was good it 
it. And that was the reason why it was easy to create every song because for every song, I told um, Flavor the story about Papa Benji. I told, you know, you just, it's a story, so we just lived everything. And so it was easy to create, you know. And when everything came together and I listened to every song, I was like, this is it. Yeah. Like, this is it. I was confident, like 100%. And beyond the fact that I was confident based on what I was hearing, because I'm a music person, like I, I'm a critic, like I criticize everything. Yeah. So what we did was I criticized that album. I frustrated this guy. <laughs> Like every, I would play, I would play each song like 10 to between 20 and 50 times. Everybody around me, they all frustrated. And when I could listen to the songs and I couldn't hear anything, no fault, no nothing, over and over again, I was listening to that album every day and I was satisfied. I never disturbed him again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, because the thing is that he did it like this Dr. Seth is like there's something that there's something he does that I respect and I feel is near I don't know how he, do, he does it right yeah so he, you take your verse right he takes the artist's verse and he takes some elements from their backups and anything and you twist everything and you don't know what he's doing so i'll be paying attention i'll be looking at him i'm like what is, what is he doing so i see it and it changes and you think it's going now it, 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 it's now perfect to me yeah and the next thing you take it to another level and it will now get ruined <laughs> i'm like guy the spoiler <laughs> you say no worry no worry just wait you will now fix it still will now come and he will now place it on the song and i'm like damn yeah. do you get so that is one thing that makes me even more comfortable. The fact that he's so invested in the work. So I'm like, this one, no, with this boy, I do okay. So, you know, you know, fuck up. <laughs> you, you know what's surreal for me? Because when I listen to both projects, I think a very key part of it that runs on both projects is harmony. Everything fits. The one verse fits into the other, one who connects to the verse. And then when you go beyond the song, there's nothing that just stays out from each other. They're individual records, like with their own vibe and everything, but there's a sameness of, like there's a consistent sameness to everything. Like the first one, huh? like Yabasi, you have hip hop and high life and then storytelling. This other project, a bit expanded, but the same storytelling. So for me, it's important to hear what happens on this side. Like, so this is what creates this. Okay. This is the engine behind, <laughs> behind this other mm. one. For you, um, Dr. Seth, when he sold this dream to you, I know you've told me how you bought it because you also wanted to to make something of similar vein mm. and you were so inclined. But when you chose to do this, like what, what, okay, what did he sell to you? Mm, I think basically um, I knew the work was going to come out. Okay. That, that was certain. So that's all I need. Why is that important? <laughs> no, this is the thing. See, I've been in this thing for, I've, I've been producing since like 2010 and so I've I've produced my best types of beats and they have never seen the daylight. Sometimes okay. I've produced beats and people don't even believe in the beat. Yeah. Okay. So knowing that my beat was going to come out, like this would like like this would like guy more can't do this thing. This thing will go could drop them outside. Maybe people consume them. Yeah. Uh, it was sure that it was going to come out. Come on, man, let's do it. Because I too, I like to test myself. I like to know what people really think about me. What yeah. people, let me, let me not be like, say, I did lie to myself, say, I savvy this thing. Then, you know, people don't really consume me the way maybe I practically feel in my head. Yeah. So that was, the, that was an opportunity for me to actually just 
you know, pitching my sound another time again, you get from another source, which is which was actually way way more wider. Do you feel there's a limitation to how f- producers can travel in this market? Because as a producer, like the very art of production and yeah. how this market rates it, yeah. you have to pair. You can be a fantastic musician. You can create the greatest, most unheard of beats. You could mm. wake Mozart up and say, "Nami mm. be Mozart of this generation. Mm. Shake me." Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> As a producer, but what's different now between then and now is for your work to get like full value. It has to be paired with something else. In the, matter, in the matter of speaking, your work might be finished to you, but for it to be finished to the world, it needs to get things that are beyond your control. Yeah, beyond your reach. Let me use that word. How does that feel as a producer, as a creative? So, just like I said, I take my 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 own, I take my own step of creativity as like a school that I move step by step. Yeah, there are things I like. I don't run to get it because I know that I don't need to run to get it. I, I just have to walk. Yeah. Yeah. So I love those things, but I don't keep them as a goal. What matters is what I have now and how I need to move to the next level because I know I need to get there, but I need to pass so many levels to get there. So I look at those things that I want that I actually feel like I need. And I'm like, okay, how do I get this? So I try to walk away through it. So I know when you're walking, you have, you have, you meet certain things. You meet certain people who will be springboards. You meet certain people who will give you water. I don't know if you get so. Yeah. But at every point you meet, you should be your best because you don't know where it's actually going to take you. Hmm. Yeah. This so, OT, this is pretty much straight OT. Yeah, it's just straight. It's just straight. Where did you get it from? How did you grow up? So for me, I, I, I realized, so right now my mom is in town. Okay. So I realized. How did you grow up? Yeah, I, I want to say something before <laughs> I go ahead. So. I realized I've never really been at home. Okay. Yeah, I've never really been at home. Like, I've always been going out to find what I, what I don't know. Yeah. Like, from a kid. So, I started playing the instrument by five years. I started playing the drums by five Whoa. years. So, by 10 years, I started playing the keyboard. I was a good keyboardist by 10 years old. So, by those times, I, I can count how many churches I know are opened by myself as a kid. Because yeah. my parents just said, okay, and they need you to help them go and play because they're just opening the church. So, I go to plenty places and I play and I start there. When the church have more instrumentalists, I now leave. I do that a lot because my dad just sends me there. And funny enough, I do that for free because I just like playing keyboard, basically. Because why I like them? Because that was the only place I played keyboard. In my house, in my dad's band, my dad doesn't allow me to play. He doesn't allow me to play the keyboard because he feels I, I, I'm too skillful. So he allow me to play maybe every other instrument. Yeah. And that, that, that training... How does that contribute to the music that you make now? So I have discipline. I have so oh. much discipline. I have so much discipline. So my dad is this kind of guy that he knows you can play more than this guy. He will keep you and he'll put this guy. He tell you to watch him. Is that not annoying? Yeah, it's really annoying. So he he, he will do that like three, four, five times. Then you now start learning from this guy. Okay. You now realize that wow, this guy is actually guru. I need to learn from me. Then, at that point, I'm now like, how did my dad even see that this guy is good and we didn't know that this guy is good? I didn't even get it. So, I feel what my dad does is he makes you humble. He teaches you that first. Then from there, you can now. Huh. So, your base is humility yeah, first. and hard work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you, with, with those two traits, humility means you would always, always, always be a student. So you stay fresh <laughs> if you remain a student. <laughs> then hard work just means yeah, yeah, work with it. Work with it. Come on. Yeah, yeah, steady. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Looking at your office, one of the most interesting thing. I look around your office, and there's this, this two, I don't know, trophies because they actually look like <laughs> trophies. There's a, it has the silver man holding a head. There has this symbolic jester golden jester hat mm. and beneath it is this great savannah comedy or comic awards right yeah, let, me, let, me see, let me see let me see let's see yeah it's beautiful let me hold it i, I really like it it's it feels so heavy and so yeah, rich heavy. <laughs> like an actual thing yeah so it's not even the symbolism as a 
It's a real thing. As decoration, even as art. Yeah. You would want to keep this. Yeah. Exactly. Like the piece of work itself is yeah. valuable. Yeah. Then the symbolism just adds when to I it. Saw, when I picked it up, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're keeping this one. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, you know, you know you've picked something. <laughs> it feels original and such a solid base. Yeah, man. So it's the Savannah Comics Choice Award, and Basket Mouth is the Savannah Pan African Comic of the Year. Yeah. So that means you are the person that crosses beyond borders. And that's me, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. And you have like, two of this. Yeah. Like, I wanted, I think it was, I can't remember the years now. Yeah. But I know it was, it was two years in a row. Uh, let it stay here. I like is it. Is it two years in a row? Yeah, two years in a row. Okay. Two years in a row, you won this. Yeah. Why? I don't see a lot of awards here. In fact, none other. No. Than this, this two. <laughs> Just this two. And you man that on paper I, I've seen thousands of awards <laughs> connected to your name. One this, one that, one this, yeah. one. You're like an award magnet. <laughs> yeah, man. Why do you believe? Why Why do you hold on to these two and display them proudly? So, um, you know, I've, I've hosted a few awards, and I've presented awards as well. That I'm backstage, you know, been at these events, and I've seen people give someone else an award because the winner is not there. Okay. Yeah, and you're like, is the artist there? No, I'm going to change the winner to a so, so person. Just in three seconds, it happens. Just to add more glow Just to, to add more award. glow to the award. Because the to other the person, ceremony. Yeah, so the person is there, so the person will be able to get on. And, and add to, the, add to, to the, the, show. the show. So I've seen that happen so many times. But that sucks, though. Yeah, it does. That's it does, like, because the person... Like, it's a crazy bias. Two much so the thing is i'm like you're stealing from these guys right because they earned it but now because they were not able to make it you are now giving someone else i think that's bullshit so because of so because of that every award that i've received except the ones that they maybe i'm not able to make it and they still sent to me those ones are value them, but unfortunately, you know, I can't display them. They're not fine rich. What's yeah. different about this one? <laughs> What's different about this one? Why do this you one, why do you value this one? This one, the reason why I value this one is because the way they picked the winners, right? The way they picked the winner was like pair pairing. Yeah. Right? So they picked comedians from different parts of Africa. So the voting vote. academy came yeah. from Comedians. From comedians. So it's not the public. It's not, not the public. It's just your your fellow your colleagues. Your colleagues. Your colleagues will do the same way you vote for the, for them. But you will like the way they did it, I couldn't see my name in any of the votes. Of course. Right? That's the way it's done. So I voted people and and they were the same. So when I when I saw it, I was like, Yeah. Yeah, this is good. I know that this guy the, the votes came from people from an informed group of people exactly that have skin in the game exactly and it makes it better because these are your colleagues so just like say everybody where they do it in you they do now i, I admit say, to the fact that this guy now you get and take yeah. it say you're special yeah so you felt different i i get it because working in the same field with people like before someone will, that you're doing the same thing with will point at you and say, okay, this guy better pass me, or this guy good like this. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. And to be honest, when when I when they called me up, when I, I to be honest, the first time I won it, yeah, I didn't believe it. I didn't know I was gonna win it. Because I saw the other um nominees. Comics. Dope guys, man. And when I won, I was like, oh, that was the first time I felt felt like when I won an award, all the awards I've been winning, I just, mm, thank you. <laughs> just because I know seeing now, just to there. But when I won this one, it felt different. Like I was excited because I know about the voting process. I know how difficult. I, and these guys, they took it to the next level, man. They took it to, like you, you download, you go to the app and whatever and start. It was so secured. 
So whoever wins it, you deserve it. Like you earned it. So when I got it, I got it on stage. And when I won the second one, I was shocked. And I told them on stage, I was like, please, you know what? I don't want any more. <laughs> like, because it's in the excitement is too much. Like, because now I understand how it feels yeah. to win like the Grammys and yeah. the and the Oscars and all that. Yeah. Can I be a word? Okay, this yeah. is at that level. Yeah, it felt it felt like that. Okay. You understand? And I can imagine how AMVC feel like. You understand? Sure. Because AMVC is like it's the, the height of the height of, uh, of African news, African film. Film, yeah. So that's how it is because African AMVC they too they have the same voting voting process. process. Yes, they have right. like an academy drawn from the yeah. industry. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. So I I want to like segue this award conversation into into like you mentioned Nollywood also. You're very active in Nollywood and the music you make. There's a very there's a connection to our film industry on both albums. Yeah. For Yabasi now you had Papa Benji and now these are the horoscopes. You also have Scorpio, a yeah. feature length movie that will be out this year. Yeah. But somehow within the communication you tell people there's a you tell people that there's this is out because of this. You even creatively you take stories from one place and use it to create in the other place or yeah. inspire people to create. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like the regular I'm releasing a movie, I'm marketing it with an album. The same way people hold soundtrack albums and really there's this certain disconnect that doesn't work. Maybe it's maybe the marketing together is not synced or something, but the albums stand alone as their own property. People can listen to the album and if they don't go and look for the literature behind it, they wouldn't care. So they hold their own value as music products on their own. Why? Why is it is it is it deliberate? So the thing is, um with Yabas, we dropped Yabas and um about the same time that we launched Papa Benji. Yeah. And we kind of tried to connect it, which was the reason why we the the, the montage you know, carries the uh, the Papa Benji um, song because we used it like we, we tried to mirror the project. Yeah. Um, we didn't do the same thing with horoscopes. Okay. Because there's a deluxe album coming. So the deluxe album is what we are going to put in sync with the movie. Oh. Yeah, so... so this is a bit of a foreigner. Yes. So the deluxe album will have about um, about 15 songs. And that remaining six songs will now complete what we're trying to create, what we're trying to tell the, the, the consumers. Yeah. It will further give them a proper... Uh, knowledge of what we're doing so um so it's gonna be like a week apart and then we'll marry everything by then clips from the movie would have been lifted to make some of the music videos yeah so you're gonna start seeing that towards you know the the release of the film yeah and the conversation about the movie will start coming your way in a couple of months yeah we'll start making a little bit of noise but right now I'm actually pushing the the album because the album can stand alone. Yeah. Right. And it does stand alone yeah, it based alone. on its merit. Yes. So I'm like, no, there's no need to driving both together. Just push it then. But when we're doing the deluxe album, you now get to see that it actually has to be connected. Huh. That's amazing though. That's key. So try. now, if, if I want to connect this to awards now, when the AMVCs start to, you know, throw in their best soundtracks, you know, you should be putting in your album. Yeah, if, if, if when I see that category pop up, it always pops up every year. Are you serious? Yes. Have someone just look out for it. Uh, I, I, I'm not. It pops up. Okay, no, no. Actually, 
Yeah, they brought it up, but because of it doesn't have a category on soundtrack on uh, because Papa Benj is an web series. Oh, yeah, they don't have one for um, movie, so I've not released the movie yet, so I can't, I can't do that. But with Scorpio, you have a with chance. Scorpio, yeah. So I think uh, I think I'm going to win. I think I'm going to win an award. I'm not. You're going to because if you can, if if you can release. A project that has already done the work musically yeah. and can you know attest to that fact. It's, I think it's further marketing for the movie itself yeah. when it eventually comes out. To be honest, I can you know the same way I was talking about the album that man, when this album was coming, I was hundred percent confident that this album was going to you know get the response that it deserves. Dude, man, that's the same way I feel about the movie. The movie. The movie is good. This is your first feature film. This is my first feature film. And it's a very good movie. Once again, why Nollywood? <laughs> and now, um, why Nollywood? I'm about to say something that will offend it, um, some people. But I'm right, going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Where is Nollywood? Nollywood is in the minds and hearts of everyone. So you, can't point, you can't point to a place and say, um, this is it. People just approximate an industry from... Where did the name come from? It's from Hollywood. It was, they, they beat it off Hollywood. I don't like something that is not original. Okay. You know, like I feel as Africans, we should be original. The same way our music, our fashion, our culture... I believe that if anybody's going to be biting, it should be them, not us. Then why are you comfortable with the name Afrobeats? Afrobeats? I'm not... I don't care about Afrobeat. I don't care about the the name itself. I like the name Afrobeats. Beats. It's African beats. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's what it means. Yeah. African beats, right? That's what it means, have you? Yes. So, so that one, I do okay with that one. But Nollywood, you just, but, you don't connect with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how. I, I'm trying to understand. I'm just asking. I'm but trying to learn. People, people will. Okay, people will subscribe to this. Would say the proponents of this. I never asked this question myself. The proponents of the, of having these southern names like Nollywood, Afrobeats, they might not come from the best places, but do they? But they are created out of necessity to present a unified front from this community, from this area of the world, like the Indians now. They did so much movies. Is there anything like Bollywood? Jam Germanwood. There's Bollywood. I know that's I'm talking about European Europeans now. No. There's no no Francie Wood. No, we don't have that. Why did but they the biggest bite? but the Why biggest, did they bite from them? But just a bit. The biggest, the three largest film industries in the world have the woods about them. Why? <laughs> That's a mystery of the world. So, what would you rather like? If you're going, like, let's put it to you. If you're going, to my movie is a it's a Nigerian movie. Okay, it's a film from Nigeria. It's a film, it's a film from Nigeria. I like when you say film. Like, it's a, like film, a, of, it's a film of Nigerian origin. Oh, it's even better. <laughs> a film of Nigerian origin. Write that down. I like that. <laughs> Film of Nigerian origin. Oh, ah! This guy is a bit So the thing is, um, I'm sorry, the thing, I, I try to understand certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Because when people say Nollywood, Nollywood, I'm like, okay, how? Because you know, day before, I don't know about them. I just wake up one day, just here, and I'm like, oh, wow, what, what, what was that? What was that? What was that? Okay. No? <laughs> so, um, but you know, I, I not like I accept it, but you know that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. But 
when my movie is coming out, it's going to be a film of Nigerian origin. Okay. Yeah, I prefer that. Okay. It's more regional. A film of Nigerian origin. Yeah, I like that. That's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so let me answer your question. <laughs> See why um, am I paying attention to the Nigerian film industry? Yes. Now um, there was a time I don't know if I've ever told you this. In first act, me and my friends we teamed up with some girls, some rich kids. They have a big house in first act, and we got cameras. We wanted to uh, make a, a drama um, series. <laughs> with you. And myself, my brother, and a few other people. We got cameras. We recorded like i've always wanted to make films yeah i've i've been a movie i've seen i've been freaking over movies for a long time yeah as far back as i can remember i was never like you know those those um indian, indian films, films people they watch yes. i didn't used to watch it sunita them i uh, know all those things now, I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, snake girl, no, no, all those things now, idiots, I, mad men. Nah, I didn't watch all the stuff. Okay, I've always been very critical. Not like what were you focused on back then? The thing is, I needed, I needed to feed. Okay, I wanted, I was hungry. Right, I was so hungry that the kind of movies I watched back then as a kid, like when we like. I loved films like when I grew up, like you know, when I grew up. Let me see, what where do film self? I was let me see. I was too young to be watching that movie show. I want to try and see if I can remember the name now. You're watching Soft Pond? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried, yeah, it, so, I tried it so damn so far back. I can't remember. Okay, but I you know, movies we, I wasn't really exposed to movies as such. Yeah. But the ones that we would Did you see things fall apart? Yes, of course. Huh. Loved it. To see sunset at dawn or so. Sunset, I, I don't think I saw that. But Nigerian films, yes, the good ones. I saw all those ones. You saw Tales by Moonlight. Yeah, of course, those stuff. So oh, those ones good now. Ah, that time I ah, you know, Kokro at dawn. Yes. You know, Ichoku. Yeah, yeah, Ichoku. Yes. Those kind of stuff. I enjoyed films. At some point, really, really came out. Really, really came. Yeah. I, I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> but then I, I was a critic already. Yeah. So movies that I grew up watching were films like, like you know, Princess Bride. Yeah. Films we didn't like films that didn't really come into the market. You saw the first Living in Bondage. Yeah, I did. It was not bad. I liked it. Actually, I did. Did like it. The second one, did you? Can you say the same? Mm, no, nah, that nah. Okay. I did new one. Yes. Why you set me up? Like this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. I didn't watch it, man. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Okay, cool. And then, so what? What are you bringing to Nollywood with this? With this thirst for originality that you've said comes from way back. What does copy satisfy in Nollywood? Okay, so what we tried to do with Scorpio, right? I, it, now, if you listen to the album Horoscopes, yeah, you 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 understand that it's it covers everything. Yes, the song itself covers everything. It covers travel, covers um, adventure, yeah. covers love, love, covers hate, yeah. deceit, yes. it covers partying, everything. It just creates a snapshot of the human condition, exactly. the human experience. So the movie is about not everything, but it's one story yeah. that's connected to everything and almost everybody. Yeah. I can if I tell you one layer of the movie, I'm doing too yes, much, yes, but it's really dope and it's a very interesting it's story. Just, it's just thematically expansive. Like, you know how to use <laughs> like the thing. I don't. I'm not good with big words. Yeah, I agree. But I'll 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 start talking to you on the side <laughs> whenever I want to say some things in public. <laughs> so, for you, Doctor Seth, yeah. Knowing that you're the art you're making, it's it's a part of the film industry. How does that impact on how you how you create? Does that have any bearing at all? Yeah. So. Just like him too, I like movies, so I like 
But like, like it's so weird that the way I watch my movies, I, I, I don't know if it's okay. I, 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 I mute it. I watch on mute sometimes to enjoy it. <laughs> just for real? Yeah, I just. So you just love the pictures? Yeah. So do you I, put subtitles. Yeah, down? no, I don't. I don't do anything. I just use my head. I create the sound. I don't. I'm just creating everything that's happening in my head. As a kid. Okay. I started as a kid like that. So I grew like that. So I, I, I love... So, so if did I'm, people think you were weird for so, doing this? No, so why do I don't talk? Okay. So people will not judge me. Because I, I, I grew up where... I grew up in the barracks. So I grew up where they judge everything. You have, you um, have long nails. They judge, you they have judge you. So I just they keep There's quiet. so much attention yeah, so on just, everybody. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't talk much, basically. So for, so for me, I, so if, I'm, if I'm watching a movie and, I, and there's actually sound... God, like the sound takes me more than what even the pictures. Yeah. So sometimes I just go and just try to test my head. So for me, creating music now, I try to put in different modes because there's a way I feel when the sound is attached to the picture. Yeah. I feel that I feel like it's complete. So once I'm making my my music, I try to put different modes inside. I try to understand what I want to do. So I try to replicate that in a mode and I find a way to put it in the music. Okay. So I can sell boats in and out. Okay. Yeah. And is there at any point, like, have you been in, like, spaces where you've had to, like, actively pair the music and the film and all of that together? Like, does that in any way, like, how do you intersect? Do you intersect at all in the production process? No, of the no, movie? no, no. At all, you just interpret the story yeah, 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 that, and the spirit of the film. Yes, that's why. I, yeah, I don't. I don't try to blend in my head. Nah, I just try to create. Okay. So once once I'm creating, then I feel first is to bring out the template. Yeah. And second is to blend. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't do. I don't do one before the other. I do. I, I don't do like. I don't try to do both at the same time. So I just try to create first. I feel it needs to come out. Then we can see. Then we can try to blend it. Then it's gonna work. Yeah. Obviously, it's gonna work. Okay. So. Talking about stories, <laughs> you're a man of stories. That's your thing. Man of stories. You've always been a man of stories, like you from ah, everywhere. <laughs> so you talk about. Let's, let, let, let me see a song like "Love and Life." That's a song you've mentioned a lot. It's a yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. You've talked about. You've, you've talked about it. In Girl, you no longer talk to me. Yeah, man. If I hurt you, I'm so sorry. I'm not calling you a liar, but something you're not saying. I know. This song is so beautiful, man. <laughs> okay. This one, damn, man. I'm very tempted to just let it go. I don't want to go past 15 seconds or so that it doesn't get flagged. <laughs> Empire, they're evil. Uh, they're evil. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> How is that deal? Though? Before we go into stories, you as a person, as an art, as an A and R, as someone who's coming to reinterpret music, and Empire's getting you into a room, offering you a deal, a big ass deal. You're taking those pictures, you're smiling, big ass announcement. How did it feel? I didn't believe it, man. Like, so when, when they first hit you up, where were we? Where were you? So the thing is, um, the guy behind the camera, Tayo. Mm-hmm. Like I was, Hello, I remind. Tayo, 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 Tayo. <laughs> we need to hear your voice. Tayo, say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Tayo. Tayo's with the camera. It's so I, I love stories, so I'm going to tell you a short story. Okay. Uh, Tayo walked up to me the day we did the release party of um, Yabas. Yeah. Okay. And he said he wanted to make some of the videos. And I'm like, no, we can't have that conversation here. The next day, I was with Dr. Seth reviewing what happened the night before and how excited we were about uh, how people felt about the album. And uh, Paladin showed me a video that somebody did. And I was like, oh, this is really good. You understand? Who do I? I said, one guy, I give it to Tyro. I said, oh, there's one guy we woke up to said that he does it. And I said, he happened to be the same person. I like, and I said... Tayo, Tayo has his pulse on the industry. I'll just tell you a little, just to, <laughs> not to interrupt you, but Tayo follows everybody of a note in this game. That he, like, where he knows it's happening. So yeah. he follows the industry. 
So he knows yeah. what's up. He has yeah. he does his own market intelligence. <laughs> That's why it's he has good. lots of relationships. Mm. It's good. Yes, mm. he is. Mm. So you're saying. So um the way so man, I'm that kind of person that if something happens, is the way something will happen and I, I it clicks, I'm like, okay, bright, it's a sign. That's how I work. So because Paladin collected his number, so the him walking to, up to me, seeing this video the next day. Paladin has his number. I called him. I needed somebody to record some footages on the mainland. Yeah. I called him. Blah, 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 blah. You saw your work. Nice one. Where are you? He said, on the mainland. I said, okay, now, I want you to cover some stuff on the mainland in the Kedja or whatever. Cover it for me. Let me use them as your trial. He did it. Sent it to me. I sent him the voiceover of what I wanted. Like, with the voiceover, you know the picture that you should capture. He captured it perfectly. That was the first episode of Papa Benji, the opening. I was born in Ikeja, Lagos. So he was the one that did that, the visual. So I saw it, I was like, this guy, I'm going to work with him. So you see, the way it happened, I picked it. Yeah. How many years down the line? Two years down the line, I was working on horos- um, horoscopes. And I was about to do the, I was, I was about to do it free me. Right, and they were your first partner. Your first partner. Yeah. Um, and Ty was like, "Boss, you know what? Why not just try it with someone else? Since you don't try this one, why not try someone else?" And Doctor Doctor Seth had said the same thing. Paladin yeah. said the same thing. But for this guy to just come from nowhere and say the same thing, and he now said, "Talk to Bizu." I talk to Bizu. Bizu go fit connect you. So I called Bizu. Bizu said, "Man, it's either this guy or em- this guy's an empire." But uh, call Easy. You know Easy. I happen Izzy. to know Easy. Easy is my former yeah. boss. Yeah. I worked at Universal for a year. I no wonder you know this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I call you think that this guy no book pass me. <laughs> yeah. So Easy employed me. Easy employed me at Universal. So yeah, nice. Yeah. So Easy. Called Easy. Easy sounded like he, has, he had been waiting for my call. Yeah. So as I called him, I was like, I was like welcome. Yeah. And that's how it started. <laughs> and Easy, Easy has the sweet mouth. Yeah, he did try. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Easy welcomed me in, introduced me to everyone, and I told him, Look, I'm working on this project. I'd like to send it to you. Let's you know, see how it goes. Because I wanted, I wanted um, a company that can distribute my stuff. Then I sent it to him. Immediately, boom, we love it. Da, 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 da. He took it to the next level. What I was expecting, took it to the next. That's in the Oscar and going on that side. Kind of, yeah. I was like, okay. So you see me, I would think back to the first day we did. And to that first day, I met Tyo. Yeah. He was the one that came so he could tell me about this. That's how I think. That's how I work. You understand? And that's the way I move. Yeah. You get. And like if he didn't wake up that day and said, I'm going to Basket Mouse concert, uh, event or whatever to capture this thing and send it to Basket Someone Mouse. else. It would have happened some, somehow, somewhere, as in, but through somebody else. This storyline would not have happened. If this storyline wouldn't have happened. So you see that thing. I, took, I take those things very seriously. Okay. Even with Dr. Seth, the fact that I met him. The fact that he was in tune with the Igbo music, because at the time that we were talking about, I were in sync. Why? Why is it like that? Why is he so good with everything that I need? Yeah. Do you get? So those are the things that I, I like. No, damn man, that's how it's gonna be. So, and the, when it now got to the point where I was flown down to San Francisco. Yeah. And I was walking into the office. I was like, How did you feel walking into the <laughs> office? <laughs> I was like, like, Did you feel like you, a comic, walking into the one of the biggest corporations of music bro. in the world to sign, <laughs> to sign a deal for music? Dude, I got when I got to the hotel, beautiful hotel, first of all. Yeah, I checked in. I was like, Bright, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Like, so you you're me, not you here. Call yourself bright. You yeah. don't call yourself. Yeah, I call myself bright. Sometimes, only when I'm thinking, I'll say 
No, not bright. I always say bright. Okay. When, I, when I want mock my, when I want tease myself, I say basket. Okay. But I say bright. I say you're not here for a comedy show. Yeah. You're here to, you know, meet with Gazi. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was so, so it was unbelievable. So it was it was hard to meet Taken. And I was always calling Dr. Sets. Yeah. I was updating How him. How is Gazi as a person? Was he warm? He's so cool, man. Gazi. I didn't, I, I didn't know what to expect. So yeah. he just walked in. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? Come on. He said, talking. And he said, giving me gist. <laughs> but then I had met Gazi before. He, he, he came to Ninja yeah. one time. And met. So this, the second meeting was... But the first meeting, too, was beautiful. That second was even way better. Yeah. He sat down, told me about... He told me more about himself. I learned a lot. And yeah, Gaz is a is a, is a, is a G. He's, G. He's an OG OG. He's Big time, man. He's an inventor. Uh-huh. So he's one of the few. So as he was talking, I was just tapping. He was talking, I was tapping. I was like, damn. I didn't want to be rude. I wanted to bring my phone and take notes. <laughs> I was like, no, just try and remember. <laughs> try and remember, yes. Brian. Don't forget. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I was just scooping when it was done. Yeah, client. Yes. <laughs> when it was done, I was like, so when I left, I wore, I even wore the, the, I took the, the merch, the, the, you know, yeah. And I wore that back to Dallas, right? Yeah. The track suit. And one guy walked up to me and the guy was like, excuse me, do you do, do you do music? Yes. Sir. I'm like, yeah, man, come on. I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, come on. So we go. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, see, it's one of the biggest music companies. Yeah. So that was, when the guy walked up to me, I was like, He's an artist. I like to. It happens to I was, everybody with like public yeah. music, music professionals. Right. They don't wear or put on their branded outfit. You would never see them. Instead, they're going to specific events. Even on their way down there, Dude, they never wear them. I didn't know. Because once you do that, you're like, you're like catnip. Fly, you're like a fly Dude, trap. I was at the airport. I just walked out like this. This guy just walked up to me. Are you a music producer? I was like, yes. I didn't even know why he was. So I thought that maybe he... <laughs> he worked at Empire. <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, I'm a singer. You know, I've just got this single and blah, blah, blah. I'd like for you to listen to my stuff. This man. So now I remember, oh, Bright, you're wearing this shit. Mm. Ah. <laughs> so that was when I realized how big they were. Yeah. Because of what, like, the magnet that, you know, yeah. what's the, what was happening at that point. Because Empire represents, what Empire represents is a different way to sell music. And Gazi thought up this way and he's found the perfect set of people across board. You know this Afrobeats to the world that we're screaming about and we say the pipelines are being laid to connect us between locally to global spaces. The pipelines, what are these pipelines? Distribution, access to different markets, access to places where you have infrastructure and you could work a song in those markets and and find a way to make it happen there. That is Afrobeats to the world. It is on backs of deals like this that we have succeeded so far. Swear down. Like, like, good example, another example, Fireboy Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. That's Empire. Mm -hmm. I saw that. I I see see them doing that stuff, man. So that's a big ass. When I saw it, when I saw it, I was so excited for you, man. I'm like, yes, Trust this me. is the next level. Like, I can imagine how, how, how crazy I was feeling. And to be honest, um, when we dropped Scorpio, yeah, I that, was, that, that night, because uh, I was traveling the next, the next day, yeah, I walked up to Dr. Seth and asked him, how do you feel? Mm-hmm. I remember, like, how do you, are you proud of yourself? How did you feel, Dr. Seth? So good, though. Yeah. He, he yeah. said, it did. he it said did. for the first time he yeah. was really, really happy. Yeah, yeah, for the first time, actually. About like your journey, so yeah, like yeah, something like, he did. I just wanted to hear him say. Yeah, it. like I, like I start this one, like I start. I don't say at least I don't reach here. Ah, yeah. yes. I don't drop my flag for this place. My dog's rest. More. Rest. <laughs> <laughs> because after everything, yeah. I was like, I want to find. Yeah, well, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well done. I can feel it. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Get your handshake over yeah. there. Like Thank well you, done. Yeah. So I was like, when everyone was excited, I was like, where is Dr. Seth? I want to know how he feels about that. So I was like, come, come. I shook his hand. How do you? Because I felt great. 
Yeah. But I wasn't the one that produced it. Do you understand? Yeah. He's the one that brought everything to life. Me, just the taste, I just yeah. be the ideas. I yes, I produced them, but not yeah. in the way he did. Yeah. And seeing the way he created every, because I was repeating almost all through the, the process, and I saw how he changed certain things, how he put himself into it. Yeah. And most times, I, I I read his mood. Yeah. And I go like, I know when he's not in a good mood, so I don't push. I know when to say, oh boy, have fun, I'm more, more, more step out now, more go chill. You understand? Oh boy, more, more do some things, I don't know if you talk for camera. <laughs> 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 yeah, celebrate, man. Yeah. You, you work so hard. Yeah. It's balance things that you have so, to play. So we chill, myself, Paladin, him, always chilling, vibing. And because of how we now became friends, yeah, that was key. That was key. Yeah, that friendship was key. That that was one of the strongest. Because you need your community. Weapon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you need was, your own. Yeah. yeah, that was my strongest weapon because we were now friends. Like we chill, yeah. we eat together, we really share everything. You understand? Even my own friends said they don't even. I, I won't say that, but they, I kind of like, like started a new all your journey. They don't mix small. Yeah, yeah, but everyone everyone knows everyone anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Man, I saw how he did it. So I'm like, this guy good. And I'm gonna say this. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm gonna say this guy is unarguably the best right now. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I, you know, truth. Bob, you don't I'm, apologize no, for no, the truth. I, 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 your, I respect everybody truth. right now, but I see, I've seen, and the reason why I'm saying this is not because of horoscopes. Yeah. It's because of what's coming after. <laughs> like I, I heard some of it. Yeah, and my mind it's not keeps normal. getting blown. It is not I, normal. I, I can say that my mind kept getting blown earlier before this conversation when I kept when when I listened to some of what's coming. Dude, very unfair. I didn't even play I didn't, everything. Though. I know, of course, <laughs> but the ones I heard, pff. dude. So most times I'll, I'll look at him and I'm like, damn, I wish, I wish we can bring out everything, make everybody just take, <laughs> or just go sleep then, because. One thing that we do is that we do not put a timestamp on our end of our production. Yeah. Not there, it, there's not, it must not go with the trend. Yeah. yeah. Never. Yeah. None of any of our production must go with the trend. Sure. Because that way it gives it, it, it gives it a limited lifespan. Yeah. yeah. And and that's the reason why, dude, man, I was just telling him I'm about to shoot the video for Udo, mm. maybe in a couple of months. Yeah. I can shoot any video from your anytime. bass anytime I like. Yeah. You understand? That's one thing that he did that I hadn't seen many people do. Like, creating his... Like, he's not influenced by anything. And that's one thing. Like, we we'll just be... And, and it's the way he starts. That's just one sound. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 oh. we'll do that. Yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> so, amazing. I'm happy that this has done this. There are some parts of the horoscope. There are some parts of horoscope that contain places where I'd say like extreme flashes of brilliance. You've talked about how love and love and light is this cinematic process. It's such an extended, like, creative product that you're trying to create and put together for that. And then there's Selloui. Paris has been on two of your albums. Why do you keep working with him? Okay. Um, Selloui is a beautiful record. Like I play, I, I listen to Selloui and I'm like, whoa, that was my, when I listen to music, I think I have entry points. So I might like the first song, I might like the second song, but the song that will always make me come back here is this one yeah. and for me it's this it's the celery mm. really starts uh, wow, it's good. What was in this? So this beat, I, I, I'm not sure I can remember how I made it. I'm not sure, but I feel the beat. Okay, for me, I don't lie. I don't even know which of my beat is good. 
how do you then work towards excellence? So what I do is, let me say something. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm one of the greatest samplers alive. Okay. <laughs> I feel, I feel, I don't know if I am, but I feel. So what I do is, any of my beats can be resampled, can be recycled. Okay. So I'm not really scared because it's mine. Yeah. So I just need to have somebody who, who is seeing what I'm not saying. Yeah. Yeah, I just need that. And sometimes Basket Man does that. And he convinces artists to actually see what he's seeing on, on the beat. There's, there's some beats I actually don't like. Like, for example, the beat with Buju. Yeah. I really didn't like that beat from the onset. Like, anytime he was playing beat, anytime he comes to play that beat, I, I, I the vex. I'm like, why does he even like this beat? Yeah, <laughs> but he saw what you were well, Yeah, yeah. So when Buju sang on it, and I was like, shit, everything just... Is, it was like they just unlocked everything and I saw I saw different places the beat could go. I just changed it to the one I felt like was necessary at that time. Bro, and if you see what Dr. Nice. said did that Thank night, <laughs> I was just watching. I saw the process. So the song, you know when they fast track the growth of a flower, right? Yeah. Like how the flower, the bloom and all those stuff. Yeah, the flower. Right. Yeah. Like the way the flower comes out, right? Yeah. So that was what I was seeing, right? Like, so the song started from here, and I was listening, and I was changing, and it was changing, and it kept changing. And you know the reason why it amazed me? Why? Buju never stopped singing yeah. all through the process. Yeah. It took about 10 to 15 minutes yeah. for that process. Like, as Buju started singing, this guy unlocked it. He started changing. He was fast. He was changing things. He would add some things. He didn't stop. Nobody he didn't say stop. Make her do something. He was just going. He was going until it was complete. So the beat went from maybe from 20 to 100. And the more it was changing, the more... And Buju did not change anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buju, just, Buju just came with on. one song. He was just yeah. repeating it. Yeah. And... I know that day was beautiful, man. <laughs> I love to see those things, eh? Yeah. Ah, those things, they make me happy. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then for an artist like Perusi, two albums, why do you keep going back? Oh, yes. why, why do you guys work together? Talent, first of all. Okay. Um, I think Perusi is one of the best right now. Yeah. To be honest, you agree, right? Yeah, he is. And he's a monster. He's a monster. There was the time that he did Udo. We went to his house. We were just setting yeah. up. Yeah. Doctor said was setting up. I was just chilling. Everyone was just hanging around. And Doctor said started playing the beat. Okay. And the beat started playing. He was like, just keep it. He said, put it on repeat. Yeah, repeat. Yeah. He was eating. Yeah. Went to the far back, and from there, he just took something. He just what what line? He just Udo Jeje. Ah, everybody, uh, what, what? <laughs> me and doctor said, turn this same time. I said, yeah. The next thing he said, give me mic, give me mic, give me mic. And that was how it happened. And he carried the mic and started and finished that song. So this is me watching this guy. He didn't even write it. He didn't write it. He was just dropping it. And he would say, give me another uh, channel. Uh, give me another channel. Give me another channel. I already knew he was dope when I walked with him the first time. The second time when I w went to him was in Worry. After a gig, I walked up to him. I went to his room. And I played 15 beats that Dr. Said made. As Latin was there, some other guys were there. Yeah. Peruzzi jumped on all, all 15, 15 tracks yes. and gave me a hit. For all, all 15, 15 tracks. That's how good he is. And every of everything he jumped, he came, it came with lyrics. Yeah. He wasn't vibing. He wasn't vibing. He wasn't doing the man. Talking. No, he was talking. I, I could hear and, what and, he was and saying. sinking. And it was rhyming. rhyming and rhyming and, and sinking. It was, and I heard you heard, you heard, I heard some. I heard some of it now. I heard some of it. <laughs> I, and I was like, whoa, on yes. the spot. On the spot. Straight up from the dome. Yeah. So when he did that, already we had worked on money with Oxlade and Afia. Yeah. He now gave me something that was as dope as what um, Oxlade did. Yeah. I didn't play it for Dr. <laughs> Seth. Because I said Dr. Seth could cut us and say, okay, you know what? Make we, you know, so he goes, you know, have you changed? Don't worry. Have you changed this bit? We could do as an I lie. I mean, not you. Sure, I won't play it. Awesome. So, <laughs> so this has happened. 
the success. Shout out to you for your London show. Thank you very much, yeah. man. It's beautiful. Mm. How important is it to you that you still do stand up comedy? To be honest, stand up comedy fuels me. Okay. It like the process of creating a joke from nothing and it comes out and becomes funny. Like it, it, it generates laughter. Yeah. It it's it's like like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's your, that's what that's what you get off yeah, on. Yeah, so it, it's but now the thing is when the joke now has some elements of brilliance. Yeah. So that sometimes I need it with some information. Yeah. I just tie it around there. You have to pay attention to to get it. So when I do that, that that that, that way I've scored twice, right? Yeah. I've, I've passed the message and I've made you laugh. Those ones even fails me even more. Yeah. So I can't do. I can't stop doing stand up comedy. It's it's my life. Like I would choke because I'm writing like every day. What did you see in, in London? How was London? Now London, to be honest, um, I was scared. Why? I'm gonna confess now. Why were you scared so, in London? After my last London show. Before then, I, I'd reached one point where I was like, right, you know, say, if you make any mistake, uh, you go down. Yeah. So Things had I, become very dicey. You were yeah. on the edge. No, I won't say the edge. I felt fragile. Okay. You felt, any felt mistake, vulnerable. Vulnerable. And it made me too cautious. I'm that guy that I me mean, normally, yeah. So I became a bit too cautious, right? So, and because of what's been happening with the cancel culture yeah. and all that, because of where I was yeah. and my experience, I was like, you know what? You need to be extremely careful because you don't want to see the wrong things yeah. and it comes out the wrong way. So yeah, you mean, it's a new time it's for a new everybody. Time for, yeah. We are all learn, learning, like relearning the learning social contract. Exactly. So now I'm writing the material and I'm going, my, my creative side is taking me to a certain mm -hmm. level and I'm being told that no, guy, you can't talk about this anymore. Okay. Like, really? Why? Because of X, Y, Z. Oh, all right. Yeah. Then I have to reconstruct the material. But doing that also educates you. Yes, it educates me as well. At least I'm like, I know now because I, I always work with people that, that, they are, that, that pay more attention to what's happening out there than even me. So even me, I did on point, but these guys are deeper into it. So that way they protect me, right? So, and they tell me, oh, you can't go this way. And by doing that, I've already reduced the humor in that particular that particular material by 30 percent do you get yeah so at some point i'm like man you know what i won't even work on this one again let me work on something else i see so it's it was now a bit it was killing my you know that love that i have for the, the, the art the art so after my last london gig pandemic lockdown i wasn't doing gigs i even got more paranoid I became rusty. So we started doing live lounge. Yeah. Started using live lounge to, you know. To get your spirit, get back, spirit up. back up. And in the process of me of doing the London show, I... What was in live lounge? Live lounge was... What, what was safe about live lounge? Live lounge is... So when I walked in there the first day, the first day I walked in there, I saw it and I felt it. Okay. I felt like I like I felt like you could experiment here. Yeah, this is this is like home right now, man. Right. You felt safe. I felt safe there. I like you can. You can. So I told us how, or like guy, and I started telling him this is what we should do here, blah 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 blah. And he paid attention and did everything exactly as I told him. I said I should come check it out. Checked it out. I said perfect. So this is what we're gonna do every Wednesday, blah blah blah, and dude. We started it. We've been running it now for close to two years, and 
and the audience can you connect with the audience yes. you can test your new stuff you there. test my new stuff but at the beginning it was more of entertaining them yeah more than just having fun okay so right now we're having fun okay right so london how did that translate to london so now how, how did you know you were ready for london so it was a day i got on stage there was nobody performing i had there was there was nobody we didn't have that many performances built for the gig yeah and we the lineup was quite uh, little uh, so um i think we had just um we had uh that night we had just about three comedians on the lineup yeah I was like, man, shit. <laughs> so I had to, I walked outside. I, I told myself, right, oh, yeah, this time around, we should just go and have fun. I walked up on stage and I just had fun that night. And bro, I went in. Like, I just, I didn't care about, I was like, fuck anything. Yeah. I just want to make I people laugh. I want to laugh. make people laugh. Yeah. Go there and have fun. fun. Forget about the cancel culture. Okay. Fuck, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. So I connected back to your roots. 2005, 2010. Yes. Back then. That when energy. That energy. I brought that back and it came out. I felt it. And when it poured out, after I was done, the first thing I told myself, I said, Bright, now you're ready for London. Yeah. That's the energy. That's the same I, energy I kept until the I, show happened. And guess what? Yeah. When I got to London, yeah, the whole set that I wrote, yeah, to to perform on stage, seventy percent of them I dropped. Yeah, of course, because you were because I was an element. Yes. I dropped all of them, and I did f- like freestyle Freestyle. from the beginning till like thirty minutes into my performance, and I cracked some jokes and yeah. ended the show. Nice. <laughs> and one oh, thing, I'm, 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 I'm that thing, that's actually <laughs> the pin this boy. In <laughs> <laughs> no go. <Yeah>. Chai. <laughs> Better luck <laughs> next time. <laughs> so, that element, that thing that you have, don't you think it's time for you to, to give Nigeria its first comic stand up? Because now you feel the love, now you feel the, sw- the swag, you're back in your, you're back in your element, you, you, you're, you feel new a new surge of life. Don't you think, like what you had done in London, there's enough in there to give us a special, maybe a Netflix special, an Amazon a HBO special, like a basket mount special. I think that that's something that we all need. Yeah, I speak as a fan of comedy. Yeah. So now I'm I'm still on that same level. The energy is still a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm doing something in Lagos. Okay, I'm having conversations with some people as well. So an online platform as well. Okay. So I've got that coming. And the reason why I've, I've had an offer since two years ago. Yeah, and I just my guys have been asking me when are you going to do it. But the truth is, I wasn't ready. Yeah. But now I'm ready to do it. So so let's see, maybe next year something will come out. But um, I'm going to give Nigeria something this year, September. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just maintain it, uh, the voices in my head, or I'll do something else. Or I'll do the laws of the ribs, so okay. that way I can get more comedians to come through, so that way it's more exciting. Okay, we've done this for a while, so let, let's just wrap up. So we've spoken about... You know, your connection to the art individually, together, like individually to the point where you now travel together. For you, Dr. Seth, we've spoken about your history with the art, how you've moved, your understanding of the game and how your creativity has, your creativity has been so gradual, step by step, step by step, you pushing and like focusing on getting the art done. What are you looking for, for yourself? Mm. So for me, I, I, I think the first thing that attracted me to production was the first human was Dr. Dre. Yeah. Then I now is that why your doctor said? No, 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 no not that. <laughs> <laughs> not that. <laughs> so it was Dr. Dre. Then I now loved. Then I think from Dr. Dre, I now loved T 
Timberland. Then I think uh, there's a producer, Ryan Leslie. Yeah, I loved Ryan that Leslie guy so good. much. Yeah, because yeah. he had popular videos. Then I, I now I realized I couldn't I was like these guys. Nobody, nobody Nigeria they be now. What yeah. of our own guys? Because I felt like they had a structure that you know you need you need to pass through. You yeah. know. So that and en- en- enabled yeah. like progression yeah, 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 and progression success. So you can actually know where you are, where you, you are, know, and how where you're, you're going. going. Yeah. So, but I realized in Nigeria, we, at that time, we just had Don Jazzy, and um, then coming up the to that side where the Sars, B-Tunes, Sars, yeah, the Mastercraft, Flip Ties, Flip Ties the, all the guys um, with some other guys, uh, yeah. that's and the way OJBs and them. But I, I realized, OJBs. There's, yeah. there was this guy then too. Uh, he did a lot of work on the Banjis project then. The band? Yeah, he did a lot of work then. We'll get uh, to it then. So Continue. the producers like that. So I, but I, I, I thought there, were, there was a structure. I thought there was a structure. But when, when I was now becoming, when I was trying to see, I now realized everybody was just... Working on their own. Working on, working on their own. So I felt like, okay, if I could be something in yeah. this thing, I would like to maintain it and make sure any more, every morning I come out, I pour water on it, I make sure it's fresh, I make sure it's nice, I make sure it's something that people always want to consume at any time. So I work on that personally because I feel if I want to sell the product to you, I should be honest to you to tell you that this product is good. Yeah. And so that whatever money I'm charging for it is actually is actually equating. Yeah. It's no I'm not I'm not giving what is not that value. Yes. Yeah. So I've I, f- I feel if I can do that and if if I would, or if I was going to be recognized, then people could actually just be good at whatever side they can, basically. Not just following one way, because I realized producers at a point just felt like it was just one thing that could be something. I don't know if there, and I was like, no, from this end, no, you can do anything. You don't really need to be this way. It doesn't really need to be this way. It can yeah. be this other way, too. True. Yeah, so if you just prove it and do yours, so... I'm, I'm I'm from that school of thought, so yeah. I, I feel people should break out too and do what they need to do. Okay, so, you're look, more, yeah. so you're looking to like build a new path? No, yes. Not basically build a new path. I'm just I'm looking towards making sure whatever work is coming out for me, it's valuable. Okay, yeah. value. You're focusing yeah. on value. Yeah, value. For you, basket mouth. Your story runs deep, like you conquered enough you've not i don't use the word conquered but you've been able to navigate a couple of industries successfully and you're still doing that it's almost like anywhere you enter and plant your flag you never leave so you've done comedy legend you've done tv you've smashed it so much like and now there's holly there's Nigerian film. <laughs> I know you can never catch me. <laughs> now, there's, now there's Nigerian film. Yeah. And you, if we trust the level of excellence that you've displayed over the years and within, across industries, we can also say, okay, something special is coming over there. What's in it for you? What, what's, all of this, what is it for you? What are you seeking within this? What what makes it make sense? So, for music, I love music, you know, and I wanted to make mine. <laughs> yeah. Because so, what made me dive into music from the beginning was because of the division of blending Igbo music and hip hop and hip hop. I've always I, that's like you know an invention, right? Yeah. It took years, but eventually I did it. For comedy, it was a way out. It was a gift yeah. that I took advantage of when music wasn't really working out, mm-hmm. and I saw so you, I had an option, right? Then I jumped on it. With no intention, yeah. I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to make people laugh because I do it inside class. I do it, so if I can do it on stage, and oh, you can get paid. Are you serious? Okay, then I started pushing, and when I realized I could make money from it, that's when I started paying attention to comedy outside the shores of Nigeria. I started paying more attention, and that's why I started learning about you know the process. 
and I read a lot about a lot of comedians and how they went through it and through their own their own journey. But for me, I do not copy people. Yeah. Right. I just want to know about your background mm-hmm. because I'm more interested in the background than even the journey. I want to know where you started from. You go help me. Sure. Yeah. And you now got to TV. So with TV, um, what were you trying to do with TV? TV, yes, I want, I love TV. Uh-huh. But with TV, I saw an opening. I'm always complaining about stuff. Like, why don't we have this? Why, why don't, don't we have, have that? You understand? What's this? What, why don't we have this? Is this funny? Come? Yeah. Why don't we have is this funny to you guys? Are you serious? This is funny. So I don't do one to that point where I can't say bright. You've done flat meat before. Yeah. Why not bring it back? Mm-hmm. Stop complaining. Okay. And do all those things that you have been talking mm-hmm. about and put it there. Number one, you've provided entertainment for people. You understand? Yeah. You have taxed yourself. You understand? Because mm-hmm. I've never done it before. And I love testing myself. I like going into things I do not understand and learn through the process, you understand? That's when the win is even, it feels better for myself. As in, I prefer those kind of, like if I win, if I win a comedy talent show, or whatever, yeah. but if I win Grammys, uh-huh, do you understand? Yeah. That one ain't gonna sweep me past. Yeah. Because I've done comedy for 20 years, yeah. so if I win comedy, you don't deserve it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. sure. So, this is new, this is an adventure. It's an adventure. So now, when it comes to... So when, when I got into TV, for TV, I... When I got into... I did not know I was going to get stuck. Yeah. Because I was supposed to go and move to music. Yeah. Then from music to movies. Yeah. Because I want to go through that journey. Journey. To be honest, like, I want to go through that journey and experience everything. And... The the, the, the the plan wasn't to conquer. Yeah. Who am I conquering? The plan was to do those things was, in perfection. Yes, was to express excellence. Express excellence and just, this one you love them, then do them that do, way you do them well. It. Do it the way, because, okay, you can do, you can produce, you can produce. Now you've gotten a producer. Produce that thing. Don't let anybody find fault. Since you've been seeing <laughs> fault up and down, they cannot see fault in your own. So you see that kind of mindset. Yeah. So give them that thing that you that, have been dying for because you're not the only person dying for that kind of sound. That's a crazy level of self, like <laughs> self, like criticism. Yeah, that's what I do. I only now myself I fight with every the boy don't suffer. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Let me conclude with this. So the thing is, but with music, yeah. right? What am I trying to achieve? To be honest, yeah. The, 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 the song, the album that I want to drop, yeah, that I will like, okay, this is what, this is the album. Now stop. We've not dropped it. And you know that kind of stuff that you, you're looking for that like see what happened with with your bass yeah the, the feeling that you what you feel with your bass and what you feel with horoscopes two different feelings true your bass is like a drug yeah right you see that drug horoscope get another type i want to get that type of your bass's level of spiritual Elevated. <laughs> you, want to, you want to take your bass's essence. E- essence. I want to take. I want to take yeah. it higher. Okay. I want to see if I can do that. You know. I want to create an album that when people listen to, you will just relax and yeah. be happy. Like I want to see if it's possible. An album that disarms people. Yeah. Mm. I want to see if it's possible. You like to use words well. I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> that's my. That's my love like this for a living. Because that's what you read in school. I mean. No, I went. I had. A, I have a degree in clinical biochemistry. Damn. So but you know, this is self thought. I just loved doing it, and so I'm like, I, I like this thing, manager. 
That that was it. You know how to do that. I know go school, nothing. You know the terms. Mm. I need to learn these terms, but <laughs> why they produce music? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to create an album that you disarm people. I like that. Yeah. Like we if you listen to it, we all melt. And yeah. this guy go feed one for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think that album is no it's not gonna be f- like it's not gonna be those kind of fast paced sound. Yeah. It's gonna be something that people have never heard before. Oh, oh. Yeah. But when I do that one, I'll come say, okay, bright. Yeah. Just the same thing I want to do with movies. Yeah. Like when I create that movie. Yeah. That when people watch it, you want to watch it again and again and again. Yeah. And if I do it once, I will stop. Yeah. With sitcoms, I want to do more. That's why I did Ghana Jolo. I want to do one. I never do that one yet. Yeah. So more could they come. Yeah, until I get that one. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Say, what's your what's your social media handle? Um, we know basket mouth handle. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what's yours? And D U K T O R S E W T. Dr. Set, set. Yeah. Dr. Set, One across word. all platforms, yeah, right? everywhere. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, man. Thank oh. you, Basket Mouth. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Set. Yep. I think your project's beautiful. Thank you so much, man. Yes, yeah. amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Let me get it.